The Employment Situation, October 2020. Transmission of material in this news release is embargoed until 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Friday, November 6, 2020. Total non-farm payroll employment rose by 638,000 in October, and the unemployment rate declined to 6.9%, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported today. These improvements in the labor market reflect the continued resumption of economic activity that had been curtailed due to the coronavirus, COVID-19, pandemic and efforts to contain it. In October, notable job gains occurred in leisure and hospitality, professional and business services, retail trade, and construction. Employment in government declined. Chart 1. Unemployment rate, seasonally adjusted, October 2018 to October 2020. Chart 2. Non-farm payroll employment over the month change, seasonally adjusted, October 2018 to October 2020. This news release presents statistics from two monthly surveys. The household survey measures labor force status, including unemployment, by demographic characteristics. The establishment survey measures non-farm employment, hours, and earnings by industry. For more information about the concepts and statistical methodology used in these two surveys, see the technical note. Household survey data. In October, the unemployment rate declined by 1.0 percentage point to 6.9%, and the number of unemployed persons fell by 1.5 million to 11.1 million. Both measures have declined for six consecutive months but are nearly twice their February levels, 3.5% and 5.8 million, respectively. See Table A1. For more information about how the household survey and its measures were affected by the coronavirus pandemic, see the box note on page 5. Unemployment rates declined among all major worker groups in October. The rate was 6.7% for adult men, 6.5% for adult women, 13.9% for teenagers, 6.0% for whites, 10.8% for blacks, 7.6% for Asians, and 8.8% for Hispanics. See tables A1, A2, and A3. Among the unemployed, the number of persons on temporary layoff fell by 1.4 million to 3.2 million. This measure is down considerably from the high of 18.1 million in April but is 2.4 million higher than in February. The number of permanent job losers, at 3.7 million in October, changed little over the month but is 2.4 million higher than in February. See Table A11. In October, the number of long-term unemployed, those jobless for 27 weeks or more, increased by 1.2 million to 3.6 million, accounting for 32.5% of the total unemployed. By contrast, the number of unemployed persons jobless 15 to 26 weeks decreased by 2.3 million to 2.6 million, and the number of persons jobless 5 to 14 weeks decreased by 457,000 to 2.3 million. The number of persons who were jobless less than 5 weeks was about unchanged at 2.5 million. See Table A12. The labor force participation rate increased by 0.3 percentage point to 61.7% in October, this is 1.7 percentage points below the February level. The employment population ratio increased by 0.8 percentage point to 57.4% in October but is 3.7 percentage points lower than in February. See Table A1. In October, the number of persons who usually work full-time rose by 1.2 million to 123.6 million, and the number who usually work part-time increased by 1.0 million to 26.2 million. See Table A9. The number of persons employed part-time for economic reasons increased by 383,000 to 6.7 million in October, after declines totaling 4.6 million over the prior five months. These individuals, who would have preferred full-time employment, were working part-time because their hours had been reduced or they were unable to find full-time jobs. This group includes persons who usually work full-time and persons who usually work part-time. See Table A8. The number of persons not in the labor force who currently want a job decreased by 539,000 to 6.7 million in October, this measure is 1.7 million higher than in February. 
These individuals were not counted as unemployed because they were not actively looking for work during the last four weeks or were unavailable to take a job. See Table A1. Among those not in the labor force who currently want a job, the number of persons marginally attached to the labor force, at 2.0 million, was about unchanged in October. These individuals were not in the labor force, wanted and were available for work, and had looked for a job sometime in the prior 12 months but had not looked for work in the four weeks preceding the survey. The number of discouraged workers, a subset of the marginally attached who believed that no jobs were available for them, was 588,000 in October, essentially unchanged from the previous month. See Summary Table A. Household Survey Supplemental Data. In October, 21.2% of employed persons teleworked because of the coronavirus pandemic, down from 22.7% in September. These data refer to employed persons who teleworked or worked at home for pay at some point in the last four weeks specifically because of the pandemic. In October, 15.1 million persons reported that they had been unable to work because their employer closed or lost business due to the pandemic. That is, they did not work at all or worked fewer hours at some point in the last four weeks due to the pandemic. This measure is down from 19.4 million in September. Among those who reported in October that they were unable to work because of pandemic-related closures or lost business, 11.7% received at least some pay from their employer for the hours not worked, up from 10.3% in September. About 3.6 million persons not in the labor force in October were prevented from looking for work due to the pandemic. This is down from 4.5 million in September. To be counted as unemployed, by definition, individuals must either be actively looking for work or on temporary layoff. These supplemental data come from questions added to the household survey beginning in May to help gauge the effects of the pandemic on the labor market. The data are not seasonally adjusted. Tables with estimates from the supplemental questions for all months are available online at www.bls.gov slash cps slash effects of the coronavirus covid 19 pandemichtm Establishment survey data. Total non-farm payroll employment rose by 638,000 in October and has increased for six consecutive months. In October, non-farm employment was below its February level by 10.1 million, or 6.6%. Notable job gains occurred over the month in leisure and hospitality, professional and business services, retail trade, and construction. Employment in government declined. See Table B1. For more information about how the establishment survey and its measures were affected by the coronavirus pandemic, see the box note on page 5. Employment in leisure and hospitality increased by 271,000 in October, with gains in food services and drinking places, plus 192,000, arts, entertainment, and recreation, plus 44,000, and accommodation, plus 34,000. Leisure and hospitality has added 4.8 million jobs since April, but employment in the industry is down by 3.5 million since February. Professional and business services added 208,000 jobs in October, with temporary help services, plus 109,000, accounting for about half of the gain. Employment also increased in services to buildings and dwellings, plus 19,000, computer systems design and related services, plus 16,000, and management and technical consulting services, plus 15,000. Employment in professional and business services is 1.1 million below its February level. In October, retail trade added 104,000 jobs, with almost one-third of the gain in electronics and appliance stores, plus 31,000. Employment also rose in motor vehicle and parts dealers, plus 23,000, furniture and home furnishing stores, plus 14,000, clothing and clothing accessories stores, plus 13,000, general merchandise stores, plus 10,000, and non-store retailers, plus 9,000. Employment in retail trade has risen by 1.9 million since April but is 499,000 below its February level. Construction added 84,000 jobs in October. Specialty trade contractors added jobs, both in the non-residential, plus 28,000, and residential, plus 18,000 components. 
Employment also rose in heavy and civil engineering construction and in construction of buildings, plus 19,000 each. Construction has added 789,000 jobs in the last six months, but employment is down by 294,000 since February. Employment in health care and social assistance rose by 79,000 in October but is down by 950,000 since February. In October, health care employment increased by 58,000, with the largest gains occurring in hospitals, plus 16,000 offices of physicians, plus 14,000 offices of dentists, plus 11,000, and outpatient care centers, plus 10,000. These increases were partially offset by a decline of 9,000 in nursing and residential care facilities. Social assistance added 21,000 jobs over the month. Employment in transportation and warehousing increased by 63,000 in October, with gains occurring in warehousing and storage, plus 28,000 transit and ground passenger transportation, plus 25,000, and truck transportation, plus 10,000. By contrast, air transportation shed 18,000 jobs. Employment in transportation and warehousing is 271,000 below its February level. The other services industry added 47,000 jobs in October, with gains occurring in personal and laundry services, plus 27,000, and in repair and maintenance, plus 18,000. Employment in other services is 436,000 below its February level. Manufacturing employment rose by 38,000 in October but is 621,000 lower than in February. Gains occurred in fabricated metal products, plus 7,000, primary metals, plus 6,000, and wood products, plus 4,000. Employment continued to trend up in food manufacturing, plus 6,000, and in plastics and rubber products, plus 4,000. Employment in financial activities rose by 31,000 in October but is 129,000 lower than in February. Over the month job gains occurred in finance and insurance, plus 17,000, and real estate, plus 10,000. In October, government employment fell by 268,000. A decrease of 138,000 in federal government was driven by a loss of 147,000 temporary 2020 census workers. Job losses also occurred in local government education and state government education, minus 98,000 and minus 61,000, respectively. Employment in other major industries, including mining, wholesale trade, and information, changed little in October. In October, average hourly earnings for all employees on private non-farm payrolls increased by $0.04 cents to $29.50. Average hourly earnings of private sector production and non-supervisory employees rose by $0.05 cents to $24.82. The large employment fluctuations over the past several months, especially in industries with lower-paid workers, complicate the analysis of recent trends in average hourly earnings. See tables B3 and B8. The average workweek for all employees on private non-farm payrolls was unchanged at 34.8 hours in October. In manufacturing, the workweek increased by 0.3 hour to 40.5 hours, and overtime rose by 0.2 hour to 3.2 hours. The average workweek for production and non-supervisory employees increased by 0.1 hour to 34.2 hours. See tables B2 and B7. The change in total non-farm payroll employment for August was revised up by 4,000 from plus 1,489,000 to plus 1,493,000, and the change for September was revised up by 11,000 from plus 661,000 to plus 672,000. With these revisions, employment in August and September combined was 15,000 higher than previously reported. Monthly revisions result from additional reports received from businesses and government agencies since the last published estimates and from the recalculation of seasonal factors. The employment situation for November is scheduled to be released on Friday, December 4, 2020, at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Coronavirus COVID-19 Impact on October 2020 Establishment and Household Survey Data Data collection for both surveys was affected by the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. In the establishment survey, approximately one-fifth of the establishments are assigned to four regional data collection centers for collection. Although these centers were closed, 
Interviewers at these centers worked remotely to collect data by telephone. Additionally, BLS encouraged businesses to report electronically. The collection rate for the establishment survey was 79% in October, higher than the average for the 12 months ending in February 2020. The household survey is generally conducted through in-person and telephone interviews. However, for the safety of both interviewers and respondents, in-person interviews were conducted only when telephone interviews could not be done. The household survey response rate was 80% in October, considerably higher than the low of 65% in June but below the average of 83% for the 12 months ending in February 2020. In the establishment survey, workers who are paid by their employer for all or any part of the pay period including the 12th of the month are counted as employed even if they were not actually at their jobs. Workers who are temporarily or permanently absent from their jobs and are not being paid are not counted as employed, even if they continue to receive benefits. In the household survey, individuals are classified as employed, unemployed, or not in the labor force based on their answers to a series of questions about their activities during the survey reference week, October 11th through October 17th. Workers who indicate they were not working during the entire survey reference week and expect to be recalled to their jobs should be classified as unemployed on temporary layoff. As in recent months, a large number of persons were classified as unemployed on temporary layoff in October. Since March, household survey interviewers have been instructed to classify employed persons absent from work due to temporary, coronavirus-related business closures or cutbacks as unemployed on temporary layoff. BLS and Census Bureau analyses of the underlying data suggest there still may be some workers affected by the pandemic who should have been classified as unemployed on temporary layoff. However, the share of responses that may have been misclassified was highest in the early months of the pandemic and has been considerably lower in recent months. For March through September, BLS published an estimate of what the unemployment rate would have been had misclassified workers been included among the unemployed. Repeating this same approach, the overall October unemployment rate would have been 0.3 percentage point higher than reported. However, this represents the upper bound of our estimate of misclassification and probably overstates the size of the misclassification error. According to usual practice, the data from the household survey are accepted as recorded. To maintain data integrity, no ad hoc actions are taken to reclassify survey responses. More information is available at www.bls.gov slash COVID-19 slash employment dash situation dash COVID-19 dash fact dash October 2020 dot htm.